My name is Sarah Angel and I am the founding editorial director of the Art Canada Institute. It's been three years of work in creating the Art Canada Institute which is coming to a realization this evening. Welcome everybody and thank you for coming to celebrate the launch of the Art Canada Institute. It's a, it's a labor of love at done by myself on a volunteer basis uh, and as well all of the people who are contributing to this project have worked on their material as well uh, really because they believe that it needed to exist. The Art Canada Institute is comprised of over 50 of the country's leading art historians and museum professionals and they have come together because of the belief that there is simply not enough material out there on Canadian art and visual culture. And what they wanted to do was provide a way that all Canadians could have access to the stories of our artists and our history in an accessible, friendly, 21st century way. And so what that means is we decided that we would launch our inaugural program, and that program is called the Canadian Online Art Book Project. And this project is extraordinary because what it's going to see is over the next five years, there will be 50 online art books or ebooks on key topics and themes in Canadian art history. And these are going to be available for free. When Sarah told me about it, I thought it, it's a natural. Uh, so many people turn to the, the internet these days that that seems a natural place to do it. And when she explained how she was going to do it by, by simply presenting a book, but in a, a way that you use it on the internet was actually quite fascinating. The most important works of art visually are being made accessible on this site. Material that previously has been kept in vaults uh, or was only available to be seen if it was on art gallery walls. So what we're doing is we're making sure that if you live in a geographically remote place where you don't have access to an art gallery or to a museum, that then you can still be part of the conversation about Canadian art. Then you are still able to learn about it in, in a way that is uh, being written by the experts, but also in a language and a voice and a style that is friendly and welcoming. The first book that we're releasing is on a London-based artist named Jack Chambers, who in the 1960s was Canada's highest paid artist. Uh, he died much too soon, um, tragically, when he was still in his 40s. What we are doing now is, for those people who, who don't know who he is, we are providing the story of his life, why he is significant, his most important artworks. Our next release is on an artist named Kathleen Munn. Now this is super interesting because Kathleen Munn, in her day, showed her art with the Group of Seven. She was well known, she was a celebrated name, if you haven't heard of her, don't be surprised. Uh, the reason is because really very, like hardly anybody has heard of her. However, one of the things that the Art Canada Institute wants to do is to take artists who, who should have a notoriety, who should be a household name, and what we want to do is make them a household name. Sometimes in Canada, in a place where we've had some great artists, some great international artists, some artists who've produced unbelievable work, we sometimes forget to love them, you know, and celebrate them. And I thought that to do this online, especially in this age of digital proliferation, it means that we can do something for ourselves at home, but it also means that we can share with the world. The next book after that is on an artist who I think you will have heard of, uh, the very well-renowned Canadian legend, Michael Snow. I think any discussion of, of the, the arts is, is valuable and extending it into to, to not only books or magazines but even you know, into, into other mediums is really a wonderful thing. What our goal is is to introduce people to art. We believe that art is like a language and the younger that you're becoming familiarized with it and learning about it, the more likely you are to then take the next step, go to a museum, see the real thing because you've developed that familiarity.